Hey everybody out there, this is Chris Nicholson. Um, today I thought I'd um, work on my PA-1000. I'm actually doing some rhythms and styles. So I have a lot of ideas in my head and uh, what I'm also doing, this is my also an awesome way how to um, cope with my sorrow and sadness basically because I lost my mom and everything like that. I love her so much. But she's telling me I should just keep on composing. I should keep on writing and I don't read music everybody so I do everything from the feeling of um, you know just basically how I feel today or whatever and sometimes the excitement that I have and so I put all the powers in to my soul and out to music just like this this over here this is a cool machine um, this is a Korg PA 1000 I just upgraded it with um, another uh, 64 gigs which is going to be the micro SD that's going inside the back which is now going to be internally um, and also um, what it is is that I have one USB here which is a 32 gig another USB that's another 32 gig and I think inside I don't know if that's 32 or 64 I don't know exactly how much it is inside the regular disk but the regular disk is not really going to be honest with you it's not really that much memory inside there I don't know why but this keyboard is a huge upgrade from number one my um, my Yamaha PSR S950 and it's a huge upgrade from my Korg PA600 which I actually gave to my brother so you know what made me decide to get this is that I wanted something portable you know of course I love 88 to 76 keys I wanted something portable that I can actually um, compose music on and not use a computer the computer right now it has um, it has one of the jump drives inside of it because what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to load up sound funds and sound funds I can out download different other keyboards or different sounds or even my own sounds that I have on sound fun and put them into styles put them into songs and see what I could come up with okay so enough talking what I wanted to show you well probably more talking but it's okay what I wanted to show you is um, a style that I have been working on so, um, just to show you an example, I have the style creator right here. So I'm just going to give you um, what I have been working on first, and then I'm just going to work on variation two. I'm already working. I already worked on variation one, which I'm going to show you, and then variation two I'm actually creating, and I have it in my mind. If I keep on talking, I'll forget about it. Okay, so intro one, I have three intros. I got one intro. I got I got sorry, I got three intros right here. One, two, three. Three is the count is the count in. So the first intro is gonna sound like this. And I'm gonna show you this. You have two CVs. One of them is gonna be major. CV2 is gonna be minor. So when you press a minor chord it's gonna be that. So CV1 sounds like this. Take off the metronome. because what I'm going to do is I, I usually put in more parts to it. So, okay, so CV2 is going to be the same thing but a minor version of it. So it's going to be just a little bit different, a little bit more excited. put in the rest of the instruments yet because I wanted to start on the next version uh, which I'm going to show you right now so I remember on the Yamaha you can actually press this but on the Korg it's different okay so the next version I got CV1, CV2 and CV3 you can go all the way up to CV6 um, CV actually means chord variations so chord variations which is major minor and sevenths which is pretty cool so CV1 is going to be your major chord um, what I did to record it, I have it as a chord variation length is 8, and also then record length is 8. This, you can record a style up to 32 measures long, which is really cool. Alright, so CV variation 1 is going to sound like this. Oh wait, take off the metronome. CV1 
CB1, here's CB2. Okay, and CB3 is, uh, so that, th that was the major, the minor, CB3 is the seventh. So when I press the seventh chord, oh sorry, uh, actually, or, or, it's gonna get a different variation. So CV3 is gonna sound like this. measures. So now I'm working on variation four. You have four variations on here. I'm sorry, variation two. I'm working on variation two. You have four variations, two intros, a count in, which is actually the third intro. You got four fill-ins, you got a break, um, and you got three endings. Each one of those components of the style can actually have at least, uh, except for the intros and endings, um, at least six variations each. So no matter what variation that you have and you want it to make it different from the song, you can actually do that, which is pretty cool. Okay, so variation two, it's gonna have chord change, which is chord variation one. I haven't worked on any chords on it. Right now I just worked on the drum kit. So this is what the drum kit sounds like. Okay, so now let's do number two. Number two, once I switch to number two, I have to go to the chord variation, length it as eight. As I said, it could go, it goes all the way to 32, so that's cool. So eight, and the record length goes to eight, and then set your metronome, which is that. Make sure that you, you have the same drum kit. This time I'm gonna just make it when you press the minor chord, I'm gonna make it just a little bit different. creative of the hi-hat so I, I'm gonna slow it down to like 90 and so I don't mess up so it's gonna sound like this and this is gonna be a little bit more creative the hi -hat. sorry it's only one measure kind of counting so it's gonna be
also on the second version, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to add a uh, splash symbol. So I'm going to add it. Um, actually, you know what? A little bit. These are dynamic, so a little bit of the crash. That one's more better, or or maybe a, a china. This crash sounds better. So watch this. Just like in the back. And then. And I should, add, I should add the china too. So. Wait until it comes back around again. No. I'm not in this crash. Now let me show you how it sounds fast. So, so we're going to compare it with the first version going into the second version. So here we go. First, I mean, yeah, first version of the chord variation. First, let's make it faster. It's going to sound like this. Wait, wait, take off the metronome so you get the... So that's when you press a minor. Uh, let's go back over to CV. One. It's a little more basic, see? So there's no crash symbol, there's nothing. So when you press a minor chord, you're here to crash and everything. Okay, so now let's go to number three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do it on all of these. So say for instance, you got eight tracks right over here. You have the drums, percussion. You have I didn't put the percussion on the percussion side because I'm working on a different project with that. Um, you have the bass, you have the accompaniment one, accompaniment two, accompaniment three, accompaniment four, and accompaniment five. You also have a mixer right here. So if any of these parts are too high, you can either press the mixer and go down with your jog wheel or take your finger and move it up and down, which is pretty cool. Now, here's where it gets fun. Variation three. Uh, once you start a new variation, you always have to go to the chord variation and the record length and make it the same. You can, you can make it different if you're going to keep on looping, but it's best to make it the same because um, then you can get a little bit more creative with it. If it's eight measures or if it's 16 measure uh, style. Okay, so here we go. Variation three. We got the same drum kit. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, more tricks, a little bit more um, breaks to it. So it's gonna be like this. Turn on the mesh on. There you go. Ah, you see, I messed up there. I. What happened is that when I didn't start, it reset it. So that's no problem. I can undo it. Go to, let's see, right here. If I double tap it, I get the new matter keypad. So I can just type it in eight. And right here, eight. Which is, this is such a cool machine. This is something that my Yamaha couldn't do because it doesn't have a touch screen. Um, but this, I don't need that, except for loading sound funds, which I'm doing, so that's going to take some time. But I thought I'd kill time doing a style. Okay, check this out. You ready? Do it again. <laughs> 
I'm a stickler, so I'm sorry about that. Let me do it again, everybody. This time I'm just gonna do it little pieces at the same time. I think what happened is that the, the tempo's a little bit faster, and this is what I want to show you. See right there. Okay, so that's no problem. I can fix that. I have to find where that's at, right? Because I like the rest of the rhythm. Number four. So let's let's correct number four. Hold the lead down. We we record that one one part over. I didn't put any bass there because of the reason. I'll show you. Slow it down. Let's go to the hi-hats. reason I, I pause there, because I'm going to put some crash hits there, and it's going to sound after, let's do the, uh, let's do the claps, fasten it a little bit more, so here we go, a little bit more. Crash symbol, the first one is a little too loud. So watch this, menu, event, find that crash symbol. Right there, find the velocity. A little bit louder, a little bit louder. Much better, much better. So, chord, I tell you this, ever since they invented the M1 keyboard, no other workstation outbeats a chord when it comes to recording onboard sequencing without a computer. Um, I tried all the other ones and none of them beats it, but chord is like the best. Okay, so I did variation one, variation two, variation three. Uh, before you go on, you have to save what you have. So I save it, right save. This is called Party, I'm sorry, 60s Rock and Roll Party. So here we go. And... Okay, so now we got the drums. The drums are cool. What I want to do is I want to go to the percussion. Let's go to the bass. Uh, so in variation one, the bass that I have, it sounds like this. Let's go back to uh, this one right here. Okay, so that's the rhythm. Let's go to variation two. Variation one, it's, um, 
it's percussive bass finger pop. Uh, D DN1. DN1 basically means uh, define nuance. Because uh, that's what it is. It's, it's a DNC control. Uh, so, okay, what I have to do is, let's see, which one is it? It's on number two. No problem. Go to number two. Variation two. And variation two right here. Work with my octave. Uh, it sounds pretty cool. Okay. Um, and also then now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change up the variation. record it a little slower. I'm not going to record it the same beat, but oh, before I do that, it's on um, chord variation 8, so let's do 8 here. Now, to think of like a ranger, you have to think major, minor, and sevenths. If you want to do any other chords, you can um, with the other different variations, but variation 1 is major, variation 2 is minor, and variation 3 is seventh. So, come up with a minor version of that. Just like that. And then seventh version. You know, I gotta do that part right though. But okay, so there you go. This is the um, the major version. I'm slowing it down. version. So with that, we got to set the record length. It's going to sound like this. Oh, that's right. Okay, let me redo that part again. That was my mistake. One of the notes, but it sounded really good. So let's uh, let's do a seventh version. So I'm staying on the same instrument. So I'm skipping the G. I'm holding it for another time, but this one I might have trouble doing. So I have to slow it down a lot more because I'm going to have trouble doing the seven. Some, sometimes I don't have trouble, but this one I'm going to have trouble with. I knew it. Even when I slow it down, I have trouble with it. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. fasten it. So th those are my variations right there. Let's make it a little faster. Five. 
So let's go to measure five in the event. And this is measure one. Let's see, measure five. You can actually play the whole thing. So measure two, let's go down to here, six. Okay, measure five. That note right there. It's supposed to be, let's see, that one. Okay. So you can correct your mistakes on here, which is awesome. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to chord variation one, uh, and I'm gonna go to accompaniment one. Before I do that, let's check. I have a concert grand piano on here on variation one, so let's go to variation two. I got a regular grand piano, concert grand piano. Do this in one shot. Let's try it. Uh, okay, so what I have to do is go to the chord length and didn't do it in one shot. It's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, do the right hand first, then I'm going to do the left hand. I'm going to mimic the uh, bass line, make it lower, I wonder if I could go low like that, but if I go too low, if I go say, say, say something like A or G, it's going to go beyond what the piano range is going to be, so that's why, that's going to be the next bass line, but try that. to uh, variation one again. Let's check. Um... See, variation one, just to give you an example of what it is, it's this. It's just, it's just the taps. So um, get out of the solo, and what I want to do is to go to variation two. Find that same, wait, Find that same chord as mute guitar. So right over here, mute guitar is going to be. Where are you? Hold on one minute. Mute guitar. Let me check variation one real quick. It's on page five. Okay, so mute guitar is on page five. This is going to be on page five. Mute guitar. So it's dynamic. Maybe I should keep the same thing. Or. Just like that. Okay, if I do that, I can't do it fast. Because you hear that harmonic. I have to do it real slow. This is the art of arranging, everybody. 
and it's going to sound like this. stupid I did it again <laughs> so I have to I have to redo that again I'm sorry everybody because uh, what, I, what I did is I put it right here okay so here we go Now let's go to variation two. And what I'm going to do on variation two. I want to make it a minor version of that, but instead of doing the taps, I'm going to do the full. So it's going to sound like this. Let me, uh, let me do that again, but before I do that, let me do the piano part, because the piano part I forgot to do. It's going to be almost the same. Forgetting to set the measure, so let's do it fast, see what happens. You know, um, um, but it's in the key of, you know, like the, like the monsters. And I'm just going to stay at that. Be simple. And that's hard to do it fast, so I have to do it real slow. Here you go.
next part. Uh, chord structure two. Uh, let's make that eight measures right over here, but let's see what variation one is. It's gonna be... That's the mute guitar that we were talking about. That I can do fast. Which is gonna be variation two. tell them that I'm a music arranger they don't really believe me and so this is how I do the music arranging just from my head everything's coming straight from my head I hear the rhythm in my head and then I just compose it on here okay so the next thing is now <laughs> nice okay let's see if version one it's a tenor sax the tenor sax Ten times better. So that's on page one, and now we're gonna do variation two, and it's gonna be the same thing on page one. Oh my gosh, it sounds so good. And it's gonna it's gonna follow the same method as variation one, which is just like this. Same thing. It's it's just simple. It's very very simple. piano, grand piano, Right there. 
Where is it? See, I could, I could, I could play every note right here and find it right there. Hope I can do that same rhythm at the same time. because I'm doing all of this um, on the, I don't think I, I finished the major and the, and the minor on this, but it's okay. Right now I'm just dealing with the seventh. on variation one. Woo, I did it on the wrong one too. Okay, so undo that. Okay, so let's do that. Which is right there, and that's gonna be funk guitar, which is on page three. So go to variation, sorry, variation two. Like that. 
See, I want that actual bend. So what I do is I hold my finger right at the end. So until I get it to the right density. So I don't go above, uh, you know, below that. is actually, uh, let's see, the right bass is... Nice. I'm gonna have it like that. Just simple. Just like that. I, got, I did it on the wrong track, so here we go. <laughs> Let's do it again. So that's going to be, uh, that's, called, that's called Horn Swells DNC. DNC means Define Nuance uh, Control. So what I mean by Define Nuance is, um, it's just like the uh, or super articulation on a Yamaha. You get the swells. You have, uh, if you put the joystick down. If you get to put, put the joystick up. If you press the um, your sign, what you do is you press this sign, then you press it. And some could go, if you press, if you hold it down, the whole thing is actually, if you just press it once, let it go, only one or two goes, and the rest, it's really cool. So if I hold it, or better yet, watch this. The other one, goes up. So so one goes down, and the other one goes up. And stuff like that. So watch this. I'm just gonna be very simple with it. So go variation two. That's on page one, variation two, right here, page one. There's two ver two different versions. But I like variation one better. Much better. That's the seventh. Let's make a minor version. This is what the oh, sorry. This is what the uh, minor version sounds like. Let me just set everything into cue right here. It's just gonna be that, so I don't have to do it again. Okay. So this is minor version. It's gonna sound like. So let's go to the uh, saxophone.
brass, I'm going to do something just a little bit tricky with the minor. So it's going to sound like this. Well, before I, I got to do the clean, the clean funk guitar. Sandy, I wish I had more of a... I need a little help from my stain pedal to get the characteristics of the guitar. Just like that. So I'm just going to use the first inversion. on my keyboard. <laughs> what happened is that there, the first inversion didn't come out right. That's only the second version. When I get to the third and the fourth, I'm not going to do I'm not going to do those today. But I'm just going to just only show you the second version uh, because right now it's 11:41 and I don't know how long this is going to be. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I am going to save it the way it is so we don't lose it. Just in case if the power cuts off, always save your work just in case. Okay, so now let's go to the first variation of the chords. I don't even know what I, I don't even remember what I did here. Perfect. That's a simple one because that's a first inversion. So.
One more track after this. You know, I should do a style like that too. Even though it's what come, what goes up, must come down. Spinning wheel. Da na na na. Uh, you know. Uh. So I, gotta, I have to do something like that, which is really cool. Okay, so here you go. First version. Maybe a chord. Let's go down a little bit lower. So I have to do that later. I'm just gonna do. Let's do a rehearsal run. I just want to try it out. Just, just a little rehearsal run. basic with it. So here we go. We have completed the second variation. Now let's put it to work. So this is the easy part. What you have to do is you have to sign your chords on here to um, your, your variations, actually. So go to menu, go to chord variation right here, and it's so easy. Everything that's gonna be major sustains all the way up to minor. So your minor start at the second part. We're gonna make that number two, chord variation number two throughout these tracks. Okay, and everything that's seventh, we're just gonna make that number three throughout these tracks. So these, these are all threes. And that's it, and then we save it. So we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write the style, press okay, and now after we write the style, we're going to exit out of the style. Are you, are you sure? It says, the style edit will be lost if saved. I mean, if, if not saved, sorry, if saved. If not saved, are you sure? Yes. Okay, so now we're in the style. Right here, it says our style right here, which is 60th Rock and Roll uh, Party. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do intro, which I, I'm not finished with the intro, but I'm going to do variation one to go to variation two. 
and it's gonna sound like this. Let's start it in a different key. How about that? You heard it in C, so let's start it in E flat. It's gonna be right here. Let's take off the, uh, let's see. Hold on one minute, guys. There we go. Ready? Here we go. Start that again. I'm sorry, everybody. Let me start that again. Let's do it in F. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transpose it to. I'm going to transpose it to E. How about that? So start. Start from the first one. I thought it was my cording. There's a problem there. So what I have to do is I have to go back into the style and variation two. I have to see um, right here which one's a major and which one's a mi minor. So over here it says major. They're all major right here. Okay, so let's go to number two. Aha! That's the problem right there, everybody. We have to switch that to minor. That's what I forgot to tell you about. So switch all of these to minor and then it's gonna sound different. It didn't sound right. I was like, something is not right there, so that's what I forgot to do, and I forgot to tell you about that. These are all the minors, because you, you saw me record it in minor, and then right over here, variation three is still in major, so you have to, you have to assign that to sevenths. So right here, these are all sevenths. And then we're gonna save that again. That's seventh, 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 seven. Okay, let me check the minor again for variation two. Minor, 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 minor. Okay, so there you go. We're gonna start this all over again. I apologize, everybody, that was my mistake because I'm like, something was not right. Okay, so here we go. Exit out of here. Let's start that again. This time, what I did is I transpose it. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, that style is done. It's already done. So I'm gonna show you one more style. And this style I did, uh, this was the first style I actually did on this keyboard. Oh, by the way, you can, you can on this keyboard, you can customize your own categories on here. So in a user, you can have pop, um, rock, pop, you can have ballad, oldies, R&B, countries, uh, dance, you know, you, you can name it whatever you wanna name it as your own customized styles on here. So that's one thing I like about core keyboards is that you could customize this whole keyboard just to be the way how you want it. And I just uploaded sound fun, so that's gonna be my next project um, for tonight. I'm gonna to give myself a curfew because last time I stayed up like three or four o'clock in the morning and I'm at work and I had to get up and everything. I'm my own boss too at the same time, so. Um, so now what I gotta do is, let me show you this style. So I go to the pop rock. Oh, sorry, that's factory. So I go to the pop rock right here. This is the simple rock that I made right here. So here it is. And I hope you like it. So I'm going to start with intro one, go to intro two, intro three. I'm going to show you the variations and I mean all the variations, all of the um, structures on there, and all of the chord variations. So here's major. <laughs> because on the intros it's only major and minor on the variations it's all six variations or three variations so here's the second version <laughs>
Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you, everybody. This keyboard, uh, the PA600, PA700, PA900, PA1000, any PA series keyboard is definitely worth, especially the PA1000 and the PA4X and everything, it's definitely worth the money as an arranging and as a, if you want the PA system to come with speakers and you're just the on-the-go musician that you want to put this in your hotel room or just like me I, tr I travel I travel a lot everybody so this this keyboard comes with me uh, before it used to be the Yamaha PSR S950 but this keyboard comes with me a lot the PSR S950 and the PSR uh, sorry the PA600 which I gave to my brother but now now it's the PA1000 so just wanted to show you everything thank you so much um, I have more work to do on this but I'm gonna be up as I said I'm giving myself a curfew it's actually 12 o'clock, so I'm giving myself a curfew of 1 o'clock, and then I'm heading to bed. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, sleep tight. Love you guys, and have a nice day. Sorry. Actually, I should have had one of the endings to it. So here you go. One of the endings, which is going to be, let's go to the rock era right here and this is not my style so let's do the rock and let's do something like uh there you go prison rock and here's an ending right here oops Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.